Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 2 versus 2 on 2 ways and I'm going to be playing with the 24th Infantry Division. I'm going to be joined by Sather on my team today who's going to be playing with the 2nd Infantry Division and we're up against Taki and Latino Toro who are playing with the 27th Guards Modestrauki and the Berliner Gruppierung. You might notice that uh, we have some usual suspects in the game. If you are wanting to get involved with some games, uh, then make sure to come along to my stream. Warno Wednesday is now a thing on my Twitch. Uh, I will be playing Warno every Wednesday on my stream starting at 8pm GMT plus one. Currently when the clocks change it will be GMT, so just bear that in mind. But this game today I wanted to share with you guys because it was an absolute bloodbath, an incredibly fun game to play. And today we're going to be seeing the best of the National Guard. So we're off and as you can see I have got the National Guard scouts in the church. That does give them extra line of sight because they are at a higher elevation. I've got some stingers moving up to deal with any early helicopter pushes. I've got a Bradley that's currently sitting on the road, but I'm going to let the engineers go first and get into position, followed by the military police leader. I noticed Taki's infantry getting into the edge of my town, so I am going to be unloading early just to make sure that I don't lose anything to launches. Uh, if I transports move up, the engineers will die in them. So, got to be a little bit careful, but it turns out to be a couple of Razvedka Sapare. You can see that the scouts in the church with their M14 are engaging. And since both of these don't have any AT, I'm going to be rushing up the road with the Bradley, with the M1 Abrams, and we're going to be engaging those infantry. So, the BMP 2AGs are coming down here, but they're a little bit late to the party. Bradley is going to hit one with a toe two. Second one goes down to the M1 Abrams. My fire team with the dragon going to take out a third BMP2. We're going to get an HGM onto the Strella 10M. And now Taki's BMP2 AG here is going to be able to take out one of my Bradleys. But the M3A1 going to land a toe two on target. And all of Taki's initial push into my town on the right hand side gets absolutely evaporated uh, by my forces. Because none of his recon had any AT there was nothing to stop me from moving the M3A1 and the Abrams into an aggressive position there to really demolish those APCs as they came in after the fact. Also dropping off these fireteam dragons that came in with the M2A1 Bradleys really really paid off. Meanwhile in the centre a Conker's M did manage to pick off one of my M1 Abrams. A chaparral trying to get two missiles on target there but an almost impossible task of course. But uh, my poor Abrams <laughs> utterly destroyed uh, by the A to GM which I'm now going to bomb with my F4E Phantom 2. Of course, he's going to get shot down. <laughs> I guess, why would I land too when my enemy can? BMP2D going to be shot at by the Toad 2s. First missile is going to miss. Second one lands on target, but I am going to be losing my M3A1 to that, which is unfortunate because that's my a lot of my recon for this M1 Abrams. I do, of course, have my engineers pushing ahead. Got to be a little bit careful, though, of the MI24V as I continue to move forwards. But just hoping to finish off the Modestrauki there and manage to do so. That was the RPG-27 variant, which actually has a quite decent amount of penetration. It's like 21 penetration. Actually really scary to come up against with heavy tanks at close range. There's an RPG-26 variant now moving into the tree line here. You can see these only have 16 penetration, so a lot less to worry about there. But my scout's going to be moving ahead in the center, and we are now set up for the grind. Two ways, it's one of those maps that really requires a strong opener in order to break the stalemate, 
and that would require Sethor potentially pushing into Delta early on, getting a Contest on the edge of the town here. And same deal with Taki. He tried to push in and contest the edge of the town here. But now I'm in a position where it's kind of difficult for him to get in here. And therefore, the only real thing to do is to start pushing and pulling in the middle of the map. So M1 Abrams in position with the M1 IP providing leadership. Also, the unit that's helping me contest the center of the sector here. Uh, but I do have a strike eagle on the way, as you can see. And that's going to be coming in for the T-80 BV. Unfortunately, going to be losing line of sight there, but going to be changing the target to try and hit the Monostrauki little bit too late on my part so it manages to miss the mark couldn't really turn the bombs in on time usually if you'd had time in advance you can see it does have 99 percent accuracy so you're not really going to miss unless you personally make a mistake m2a bradley on the right trying to deal with a transport coming in there the mtlb meanwhile Sethor up to his old games of moving a Recon helicopter around the edge of the map to look for enemy fobs. Now my M1 IP did engage the T-80B V with the M1 Abrams. My M1 IP took a lot of damage, had to smoke and fall back, but the F-15 coming in there with the laser-guided bomb. Boom goes the T-80B, and just in time for my infantry to arrive and start engaging the Monostrauki. Uh, Sethor here backing me up with some Airmobile. You can also see the T-8 there coming in. And my Strike Eagle able to help shoot that down. So I don't even have to worry about enemy AT planes. So artillery trying to kill off my M1 Abrams. But we are instead able to kill off the Modestrauki. Shoot down the T80, T8M and not lose anything for ourselves. So we're getting off to a really, really good start in this game. Strong trade so far. And that's only continuing in the center as we do remove the T-80, which would be the main threat for the M1 Abrams. And the engineers easily going to be able to deal with the enemy infantry at close range because they do have the shock trait, which activates at uh, very close ranges. I think about 120 meters to 160 meters, I think it is. Um, and then... They also have the satchel, which helps with a little bit extra damage. But that shock trait is the main thing that allows them to really beat the Modestrauki at close range. Uh, two BTR 80s going down there. We are under fire a little bit from the NSV machine guns. But the uh, Abrams going to be helping with a little bit of fire support as we keep going. Meanwhile, attack is moving through with the MTLB. Actually, nothing my engineers can do about that, so it's a bit of a sticky situation for them. They can try and throw satchels all they like, but the MTLB will just shrug them off. Same deal on the left here, the BMP-2AG causing issues for the engineers as it fires both its auto cannon and grenade launcher. It's one nice thing about the uh, 27th is their BMP-2s do come with grenade launchers on them, which makes them significantly more effective against enemy infantry. And poor T-80, well, poor engineers as a T-80BV also joins the fray. Taki knows that he's pretty safe there to engage with his tank, so the engineers are just going to have to take one for the team. Meanwhile, at the backside, the Ekate are going to be botted by the Gazelle of Sethor. Not really much we can do to deal with those just yet, but he has managed to spot himself the field depot at least so we'll be able to take that out at some point but for now I'm just trying to make ground with the engineers try and get into position where we can force the command that Taki is contesting with in the middle out of the sector uh, Latino Toro also has his own infantry here as we can see he's got some Vakshus and he's got the Vashimega with the Metis there and those HGMs trying to deal with the National Guard M1 Abrams the Abrams, though, quite resilient to the Metis, just because the Metis only has 17 penetration and we've got 15 front armor. So we're only going to be taking a couple damage per shot, as you can see. Over time, it will lower the cohesion, but we've got plenty of time to react to that HGM should it become a bit much. Meanwhile, I'm going to be bringing up an Apache and a Kiowa. So I've got the Kiowa. This is the one with the rockets on it. 
some small rocket pods. Uh, so 14 rockets. But the main thing for this is the exceptional optics, which allows the Apache to spot targets and kill them very effectively with the Hellfire and its own rockets. Meanwhile, MI-24V has now come over with the Kokon missile. I'm going to try and move up my chaparrales to take it out whilst I reverse the M1 Abrams. It's a little bit risky moving forwards the chaparrales without support in front of them, but definitely worth if I'm able to shoot down those scary helicopters. So one goes down, MI-24K going to be sitting in the air, but I don't want to move and overextend with the chaparrales too far just because they are kind of vulnerable to being one shot by enemy tanks and as we can see Latino Toro has now brought in a T-80B to the center as well as Estrella 10M that my Apache and Kiowa are going to have to be worried about. The M1 Abrams now engaging Modestrauki. You can see artillery now coming in onto the BMP-2D here. It's going to be Sethor and his M107A2s. These are the 176 millimeter big guns that the first get. Actually, very, very nice artillery pieces. Also brought up a couple of engineers on the right hand side here with flash launchers, as you can see. Ideally, I should have a unit that has uh, an AT launcher with those. Just so that the same thing that happened to my engineers doesn't happen to the engineers with the flash launchers. But I do have a tow 2 now coming up and taking position where the Fireteam Dragon is. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to be shifting over my air to the right-hand side, get these helicopters into a position where they can maybe break down the BMPs in this position. I do still need to be careful of enemy anti-air. I have no idea what the enemy anti-air capability is on this side. It's just that I saw this trailer in the mid, so I'm going to be moving away from it temporarily and putting the... Uh, force elsewhere. We are going to be spotting that unit back there just briefly. Got to be careful about that because it looked like a A. Apache trying to get a Hellfire on target of that BMP2 though. And as long as I can kind of keep at range I shouldn't have to worry too much. This is when I realized my Kiowa gets shot down and that is because there was some AA that snuck all the way around the edge. So Taki here getting some AA into my back line, which is kind of rough for me to deal with because anytime I'm flying an aircraft over this side, we're going to get shot at very early. And that means that the planes might get hit and fall back before they even drop their strike, which would be really, really bad. So I've got to go and deal with that. Meanwhile, bringing up a couple of the military police to the center. A military police don't sleep on these. They are incredibly strong. They not only... Um, help with the negative traits, the reserve trait that National Guard units get, but they furthermore increase suppression regeneration. So units recover from suppression faster when a military police unit is nearby. And you can tell units that are affected by this by the shield icon. And this is a super, super strong thing to have, even with units that aren't reserve units. So in this case, we have the unsteady trait, the reservist trait. And the military police unit, what it does is removes the unsteady trait from nearby units, but also, as I mentioned, grants a suppression regeneration bonus. And that is really, really strong for if you want to take an engagement back out and then go back in. It, it's not necessarily going to make your unit stronger, but it allows them to recover faster. And that in itself is an extremely strong thing to have. And this military police unit <laughs> definitely gets too far ahead of itself. So we are going to be losing that one pretty fast indeed. Bradley is going to be trying its best to get tow 2s on target as the T-80 BV engages at range. I'm now going to be pushing forwards a little bit with the M1 Abrams and trying to get the other Bradley on target with the tow 2. This Bradley is going to peek out at close range and get a shot on target, so that was really good. Tow 2 is going to hit the mark as well, so we're in a really, really good position here to kill this off. As long as he doesn't get to smoke in time and with the stun, he does not. Bombing strike coming in there from the Tornado GR1. Nice bombing strike onto the HGM units. 
And now I've got an eagle coming in. Looking for the bomb onto the Strella. We do manage to take out the Strella, but there's more than just the Strella there for AA. And I am unfortunately going to be losing one of those very expensive Strike Eagles. You can see the missile flying out of that tree line. It's because of the Tor. So I've got to be careful of the Tor moving forwards. And I believe in my deck, I didn't really have any, like, seed as far as I'm aware. So no way to really shut that down unless I start to arty them. So the Abrams now going to be engaging the T-80Bs in the center and you can see the concentration of units here really really starting to ramp up. Chaparral is going to be firing at the Mi-8 taking that out. M1 Abrams takes a hit to the face force back in the tree lane on the right hand side the RPG-26 not going to be scary to the front armor of the M1 Abrams. So we're able to just overwhelm the infantry a little bit there. M3A1 Bradley manages to get a tow 2 on target. One of the T-80Bs goes down as well. So we are still getting a consistent amount of kills in the center, but we have not been able to dislodge the leader that is contesting the center sector just yet. And uh, that is what is causing this to be very, very difficult to deal with. But a nice critical hit there by the tow 2 from the Bradley in order to get the kill onto a second T-80B. Artillery coming in, landing where my Abrams once were, M52 8A2 um, supply vehicle, gonna have to get the hell out of there. We managed to clean up the Sapariapio, managed to kill off the Modestrauki. And now we just got to try and make as much ground as possible, take out the BMP-1P. Unfortunately, one of my brand, well, my Abrams does go down due to the HGMs in this building. And it's probably just the, uh, the Meta squad that's still sitting there. Meanwhile, enemy artillery still coming in, hitting Sathor's tracked rapier. I'm just lucky to survive. But because we're in the valley here, the Apache's actually in a really, really good spot. It's able to support a very close range and there's a very small area at which could act can actually fire at us. Another tool that the uh, Berlin Agrippiron gets access to is indeed the Bolotino. Thankfully, I had already fallen back my Abrams, otherwise I would have been in big trouble there. And unfortunately, Sathor does lose a couple of units of infantry, but the majority of my units survive unscathed from the Bolotino at least. And meanwhile, my M52 is going to be zooming back to the fob that uh, Sathor has. Actually, I, was, I think I was selling that one. Uh, but more Abrams now on the way. You can see I've got four more on the way. These Abrams are incredibly cheap. And when I'm concentrating on micro, I'm building up a lot of points. Like I'm floating a lot of points. And then I realize all of a sudden, you know, I've got 600 plus points to spend. But because Abrams only cost 175 points in this division, you can get a lot of them. So you can see me there bringing in a ton all at once. And now we are continuing to make a push in the middle. So Bradley is a little bit of ex exposed to the MI-24, not any AA close enough just yet. I am moving up the chaparrales, they're just a little bit late to the party. Meanwhile, M1IP is going to be engaging the BMP 1Ps on the road that have been brought in to reinforce. I do have to be a little bit careful of Latino Toro's uh, more shoots in a close range, but I have to be even more careful of the T8 M. And the chaparrales here are going to be able to shoot it down. And you can see that all of my Abrams there smoking off so they avoid being shot at by those HGMs. My Apache coming over to help with the Superdi, whilst also firing off the Hellfire there, hitting the T80 BB really hard. And now the Tor is engaging. You can see those missiles coming out. And the Apache is going to get shot down, unfortunately. 65% accuracy the Tor has. A T-80 there really nearly took that out. SU-22 coming in for the rocket strike onto the M1IP. It's going to make me pull that back as it gets stunned. And these two Abrams are very, very low on health. I'm trying to get them out of there without losing them. If I can bring them back and fix them up after the damage that we've dealt, that would be absolutely huge. So just trying to make that happen. 
SU-22 coming around for a second run. Almost crashes into the track for Apia as it goes down. Meanwhile, military police moving across the open. You can see that due to our push there into the backside of that sector, we are now at a plus three. We've managed to fully secure this after forcing the enemy to remove their leader. Uh, meanwhile, on the right, things were pretty chill. I brought up a few units on the flank here just to make sure that I wasn't getting my reinforcements cut off at least. But the majority of the focus of this game is now happening in the center of the map and that's only going to be continuing as we move forwards. With my really good engagements with the M1 Abrams, I've managed to pick up a solid lead in kills and that has led to the territory gain. But we're going to want to maintain that. So that's kind of the next thing to do. I need to get myself into a good position. I need to fix up these M1 Abrams. You can see that one of them has made it back to supply that I've now brought in. Two more M54s have arrived. Artillery is coming in for the M3A1 Bradley, but we're able to dodge that in good time. Missiles coming forward from the Chaparral there. Do you manage to shoot down the Mi-24V? So we're looking like we're in a very good position as we continue to take out both another BMP-2AG and the Modestrogi RBD-27 here. An absolute bloodbath as the M1s move forwards. Chapter out and I try and take down the MI-24K as well. Unfortunately, missing all but one of those missiles. And this Chaparral missing as well. <laughs> Sad times. So now I'm pushing very aggressively. Main reason being is I want to get into a position where we can defend from this road and this road at the same time from this heavy cover. So I'm getting really, really far up. We managed to kill the MI-24 finally. I want to get rid of this BTR-80 and we are going to be trying our best to kill that off but now I'm getting hit from tanks in this tree line we're getting hit from tanks on the main road I'm gonna lose two Abrams there we get hit by another one here and that's two Abrams down very very quickly the infantry on this left hand side really not helping out and it seems that I may have overextended without recon infantry or even just infantry uh, moving ahead of my tanks there I left myself very very vulnerable to those ambushes and that obviously uh, paid off for our opponents so a little bit of a mistake on my part allowing the abrams to be so aggressive in the center but just look at the smoke as all of these <laughs> units have been destroyed we've even got the wreck of the find there on the road the mi8 currently though just trying to be careful not to lose my tanks to the t80 bbk that can of course capture the sector as well so I'm a little bit worried about that but as long as we can continue the plus three for a decent amount of time and then hold the stalemate in the center we should win meanwhile Taythor chilling on the left hand side trying his best to provide artillery support in the center but more T-80BBs on the way and having lost so many of my M1 Abrams I've kind of put, kind of put myself in a little bit of a hole I lost pretty much the majority of the the advantage that I had in numbers and points worth of units. So I've got to really start to regroup and try and find some more of those kills once again. So SU-22 coming in with those AT missiles. Actually ends up missing both of them. Kind of a bit lucky for me to be honest. So you thought getting his challenger engaged by the T80 BBK. BBK is actually going to fall back and artillery there spot on as it hits the challenger and the challenger goes boom. T80 BV, a scary boy. So these T80 BVs, they've got 17 front armor and 19 penetration. My M1 Abrams, they only have 15 front armor and 17 penetration. So I've got to be significantly closer to those T80 BBs in order to be effective. And that's why you can see that these longer range engagements are really not going in my favor. 
And all the while we are being harassed by artillery, which is making it really, really difficult for me to position effectively. And the main reason that artillery is effective is because they still have recon and infantry nearby. You can see the Fauschimiega Metis squad still in that building. And we've also got infantry that's hanging out in this tree line. So my overextension into here was inevitably going to get shut down by the positioning of Taki and Latino Toro. Um, and that's why it happened as it did. Uh, as it did. Anyway, my Kiowa here. I don't want to get it shot down, so I'm just going to be moving that back to relative safety. Meanwhile, more artillery coming in, trying to shut down the AA. But the thing that I've got to do is get my supply sorted. Now, Sethor did bring in a Chinook for me here, so my M54s don't have to go so far to get supply. But as you can see, more Abrams on the way. That's going to be three M1IP Abrams, the green camo ones. And then we've got the National Guard camo ones, which are another three. So we've got another six tanks arriving. Now bringing them in in waves like this can be smart. Just got to be careful not to let them get clustered. Now so far I've seen primarily... 80 missile based airplanes which tells me that it's actually less likely that I'm going to be seeing cluster aircraft as well because usually people take one or the other because there's not really space to take both and that's why I'm kind of being quite careless I would say with the way in which I'm using my Abrams I'm just going for the pure brute force and it's actually working pretty well. We just destroyed the leader, the Volposfuhrer. We took out Estrella 2M squad. We took out a tank. We are going to be starting to get hit by the Buratino. But again, it's firing where I was and not where I am. So we're able to get away with that. Now these M1 IPs, they have better front armor than the M1s. So I am able to be a little bit more aggressive. But got to be careful, of course, of the T-80BVs. As there is a number of them. And now also going to get one of my M1 Abrams sniped on the left hand side. I thought I was safe there, but the scout is going to reveal that there is the T-80B that likely hit that A to GM into the side of one of my Abrams. So, as you can see, the destruction does not stop. <laughs> That's another turret <laughs> of the Abrams just gone flying as the age gem blew that sky high. I know it's, I guess, kind of technically unrealistic that an Abrams turret would blow off like that because the ammo's technically in the turret, but it looks cool, okay? Let's just <laughs> if I actually was zoomed in there, you'd see it go flying and it looks really cool. Anyway, Bedford's going to be helping fix up my tanks. I've now brought up my own M35 supply trucks as well, as we want to keep these tanks topped off. And those are going to be a lot faster at zooming backwards and forwards to the Chinook. That's why I ended up selling uh, the M58s quite a lot. And in this case, well, these two are obviously back at the field supply point getting resupplied. I've also now brought in an MLRS, the M270, that missile strike. Um, will help us secure the backside of the sector here. And if we can keep hitting that, maybe we can force him to remove his leader, although it's most likely going to be a T-80 leader, which is very, very tough for us to destroy with artillery, especially if he manages to move it every time the artillery is coming in. And my M35 supply here <laughs> gets caught out by the artillery going to immediately move away from the location of that artillery. M1 IP is now engaging the C80BV, managing to get some good shots in there, but unfortunately losing a M2 A1 Bradley in the process as my fire team dragon does dismount. Got another Apache here now with the Kiowa, so getting prepared to make a more significant push, but again, I'm kind of not doing a very good job with recon. Ideally, I need recon infantry that can sit ahead of my tanks and allow me to spot the enemy tanks before my Abrams engage. If I allow them to shoot first, I'm always going to lose. 
So you can see my M1IPs here really, really struggling. And one of them managed to just get away on low health, the other one gonna go down. And, and to me right now, that's just like a huge waste. I can't afford to lose any tanks whatsoever because the more tanks I lose, the more I give the advantage to the enemy and they're gonna have the overwhelming odds that they need to flush me out like I did them previously. So I'm gonna lose a leader there, the M1 IP leader. This M1 Abram is also extremely low on health with artillery coming in. Not a place it wants to be. The main thing I need to do is just regroup and hope that these Bradleys maybe with the Toe 2s can get some good side shots or something. In this case though, the T-80 going to be able to get away with it. So Wachschützen of Latino Toro make, controlling well on the left hand side. In the center, things back to the stalemate. But the advantage that I got from pushing them out of the middle sector briefly is still in our favor. So 649 team score to 138 with nine minutes now left on the clock. So really just hoping to hold on to that advantage, try and get some more kills back in my favor in the process, just so that they don't have the overwhelming numbers that they need to make a significant enough push to push us out entirely. Sethor going to be coming in here with some more bombing strikes. You can see the two tours back there. Their missiles flying up and then out. Jaguar. Unfortunately going to get hit and crashes right into the side of the mountain. The two tornadoes managing to get away with that one though. Bradley getting hit hard by enemy artillery. Time to fall back as more artillery is now coming in from that left side. You might be wondering, like, why aren't I using counter battery? Well, it's not really that cost efficient in this point to use artillery. The way that I'm kind of viewing this right now is if I can use my supply to fix my tanks and he's using his supply to damage my tanks then we're kind of balanced out in that regard so that's kind of what I'm going with right now and I also of course have the M270 that's going to be focusing primarily on supporting my pushes rather than counter battery as well but I've run up a bunch of Bradleys and these TOE 2s can be extremely cost efficient at taking out TATBs and TATBBs I've also got four fire team dragons that have dismounted from those Bradleys. One of the Bradleys did go down already, but this is going to put significant pressure onto the T-80s in the center, which is exactly what we need. And if we can find some kills, that would be fantastic. Artillery now also coming in. Definitely going to help with that. One of my Abrams is going to have full back. Cluster strikes from Sathor. Actually going to be quite nice there. Managed just to get away with one of his Jaguars. One of them did go down, however, but definitely took a tank with it. But yeah, now the infantry going first, which is the way that we want to do it, for sure. All those HGMs now flying towards this BMP-2. <laughs> That's sat there trying to... Survive more ace gems flying towards it now. Looks really, really cool. <laughs> Those ace gems fly past. Dragon's unfortunately not the most reliable of ace gems. They've got 50% uh, accuracy there in this case. Missing the majority, as is only the case um, with my bad luck. But regardless. We're now engaging a couple of T-80BVs with M1 Abrams again, and one of them is going to go down. So I really can't take these equal engagements, because as you can see, at that range, those T-80BVs are just constantly killing my Abrams. And I'm making the same mistakes over and over again. This time round, I was more confident because I had the infantry in front, but it obviously wasn't enough. And now the Bradley going to be going down. The Abrams very, very close to going down as well. 
but I did manage to kill the T-80 PVK, so that was a really good kill, thanks to the Strike Eagle. But the Strike Eagle getting killed swiftly after by the Toss AA. You can see it flying overhead, and, well, another Phantom going to be going down there. So it's got to the point now where I have a significantly limited number of tanks left. But what I'm going to try and do here is use some of these engineers to at least remove the infantry from the equation in the tree line. And as long as I can maintain this tree line, I can probably keep a leader in here as well. But smoke now being placed and Latino Toro going for the play across the open. Toe 2 on the right hand side does manage to pick up a BMP 2AG and will definitely be a threat to the T-80s should they push forwards. Apache here doing a good job as it manages to take out some of the infantry moving across the open there. Abrams going to be moving across almost directly into the path of the Burtino. Apache's doing its best with those hellfires. Trying to kill off some of these tanks. It's tucked in a really nice position here. Makes it very, very difficult for the tours to get on target. And the engineers, they've managed to clean out the infantry, so that's good. Again, tank disadvantage still. Taki here. Fortunately being probably more cautious than he potentially could be. If he brought in some infantry in front and managed to support them well with the T-80 BVs, then he would likely crush me at this point. Because as you can see, I was floating another bunch of points and that's now going to be invested into a lot of Bradleys. M270 MRS now going to be firing away though. Will certainly help me chip away at the units in the tree line back here. That will certainly slow down a potential push. That's the main reason I'm doing that in this case. is not necessarily to support my own push, but to stop them from pushing after I just lost a bunch of units. This Abrams here. Trying its best to kill the BMP-1P and the Modras Vidka, but uh, took an incendiary crit, which was obviously not ideal. However, the second Abrams going to be able to hopefully finish that off. Meanwhile, engineers trying to get them into this tree line so that I can control the left side whilst pushing up with my Bradleys and the Dragon Squads in the middle. Apache trying to shift forwards just enough to get his gems on target. But you can see the tours are moving into position to try and shoot that down. Engineers, meanwhile, no smoke for them as they get pounded in the open by multiple T 80 BVs. Now, oh, here come a lot of tanks. T 64s. T-64 BVs, T-80 BVs, the Apache going to be hitting hard. The MP-1K is going to go down. Now we're going to be looking for the kill onto the T-64 BVK just so that we remove any extra veterancy and also potentially any units that might be capturing the sector. A nice cluster strike there from Sethor is going to take out a couple of those tanks. My Apache Finishes off another leader tank there, which is great. And now, MiG-23 coming in. He is sick of the Apache. Second missile goes off as the MiG-23 commits. And I lose uh, that tank, unfortunately. MiG-23 does go down. I do have an Eagle now floating about. Two of them coming in to engage these Su-22s. MiG-29 does get on the tail of my eagle though. Shoots it down. There's too many aircraft here. Overwhelms my anti-air. 
I don't have that many tanks left at this point. So not too much targets for the SU-22 AT and SU-22 cluster. But it was at this point that I was kind of surprised that they had so much cluster. Because there were certainly times before when it would have been very useful. Regardless, that's going to be game. Because they have now run out of time. And we're going to take the victory. But after the full 40 minutes, you can see it was, as I mentioned at the start, an absolute bloodbath. 7,365 kills to 6,985 losses. Definitely a really, really fun engagement in the center there as we were pushing backwards and forwards against each other. I definitely overextended at that one point with a bunch of my tanks just getting absolutely evaporated because I had no infantry support for them or recon. Really big mistake and I think <laughs> this game makes a good point about making sure that you support your armor properly. You can't just A, attack your armor forwards and, and hope not to get killed because against a good player, they're going to set up uh, those traps. And Taki and Latina Toro had tanks sort of sat in ambush positions ready for me because they saw me coming with their own infantry that was sat on the side there the Fauschim Jäger Metis squad in that building I don't think even went down for a very very long time if at all um, so whilst my tanks definitely traded well before that point afterwards we kind of got stuck in a situation where they had as many T80BBs and T80s as I had M1 Abrams and that is not a situation you want to be in with this division with this division it's all about having overwhelming um, numbers advantage usually using the cheaper National Guard units uh, and in this case I kind of threw away that advantage but we managed to hold on to the center thanks to uh, just like bogging it down with even more units and artillery but yeah really really fun game nice and spectacular in the middle Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.